Good afternoon. Welcome to uh, this new series of cultural economics online uh, seminars. I'm Elisabetta Lazzaro, the CEO's uh, coordinator, professor of uh, cultural creative industries management at the business, business School for the Creative Industries, uh, University for the Creative Arts in the UK. And uh, we are honored uh, to start uh, this new series with uh, the celebrations of the uh, recipients uh, of two prizes that were awarded uh, at the uh, recent uh, uh, Biannual International Conference of Cultural Economics uh, in Bloomington, Indiana, uh, namely uh, the President Prize today and uh, in uh, two CEOs, uh, uh, there will be also the Victor Fernandez Blanco Prize uh, uh, award that, that will be celebrated. But let's focus on uh, today. Uh, I would like to, to thank uh, uh, Marco Palomeque, our uh, speaker, our presenter of today, uh, the recipient uh, together with uh, his co-author, Professor uh, Juan de Lucio of the President uh, Prize, uh, Cultural Economic Association for Cultural Economics uh, uh, President Pla Price, uh, and he will present the paper, um, Can Culture Music Consumption uh, Stabilize Well-Being During Socioeconomic uh, Shocks? And let me please uh, read uh, um, uh, the motivation for uh, uh, Marco and Juan and their people to receive uh, the ASEI President yes. Prize. Um, so the paper uh, received the, the following praise, a strong, let me quote, a strong piece of research based on an original data set of weekly patterns of music consumption in 31 OECD countries over a five year period. An interesting conclusion found that by increasing, let me anticipate the uh, findings, by increasing the consumption of positive songs, society is able uh, to compensate for negative shocks. Uh, the paper is in the core of cultural economics. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, our president, uh, Luis Cesar Herrero Pietro, uh, Prieto, was uh, expected uh, to be the discussant uh, in today's uh, presentation, but uh, uh, regrettably, uh, very unfortunately, uh, for uh, quite important family reasons, uh, he will not be able uh, to be uh, with us uh, uh, today. We miss you, Luis Cesar, very much. Um, so now the floor is... Uh, to Marco, to Marco Palomeque. Marco is a PhD candidate at the University of Alcala in Spain. He started his uh, path in the world of cultural economics, uh, specializing in the music industry. Uh, since he was a relevant music education uh, educator, as well as an economic uh, uh, an economist. He also studied innovative data sciences uh, uh, that allow him uh, to answer questions uh, in a new way. His uh, first study was uh, published uh, in the Journal of Cultural Economics, uh, uh, which provided him with the necessary focus to reach important media, uh, such as NAPR or uh, Cadena Serra, the most important radio station in Spain. And uh, the paper he's going to present is his uh, second paper. So thank you very much, Marco, and uh, the floor is yours. Well, thank you very much for the presentation, Isabetta. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Marco Palomeque. I'm from Spain. And well, uh, today we are going to discuss about this study I've done with my partner and director of my thesis, Juan de Lucio. It is called Can Culture Music Consumption Stabilize Well-Being During Socioeconomic Shocks? And well, I hope you find it interesting. Uh, let's start. Oh, give me a second. 
Okay, yes. Let's start uh, just answering the question. Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, people is already using uh, music consumption to stabilize uh, their well-being. Why, how are we going to, to prove this? Well, uh, first, we are going to build an indicator of the positive music consumption. We are going to use uh, Spotify data uh, to measure the music consumption, and then we will use natural language processing techniques to uh, analyze whether if the music is positive or not. Okay. Uh, after building this indicator, we will run some panel regression models to test the relationship between the indicator and the socioeconomic situation. In this particular case, we are going to study a period from 2016 to 2021. So we are going to use uh, some economic variables uh, that are uh, the unemployment rate and inflation rate and also some indicators of the uh, COVID-19 uh, impact on society. Finally, we will show that society uses positive music consumption to alleviate the negative impact of economic recessions and social events in subject well-being. Okay, so well, let's start with the introduction. Uh, the motivation of this paper is that uh, unemployment and pandemic have driven negative feelings reacting subject well-being. So it is important uh, to know more about how can we uh, compensate these negative feelings. Uh, in the economic literature, we can find that uh, people try to compensate uh, this subject will be in negative shocks by increasing the consumption of some goods that have high emotional return and low price. The typical example of this is the least effect. We know that uh, when we are in an economic recession, it's usual to see a rise in consumption of cosmetic goods because, well, uh, they make you feel better when you look at yourself or maybe because you want to look prettier uh, because you have a job interview. There are some different reasons. But, well, uh, the important fact here is the effect that uh, even in a crisis, the consumption of some goods uh, instead of falling uh, rise. So we think. If music is, is used to alleviate stress and anxiety as well as to enhance subject well-being, that is something that we can find easy in the psychology literature. And nowadays, uh, listen to music is pretty cheap. Almost, if you have an internet connection, it's free. You only know, you only need time and a free account from Spotify. What will happen in this case? Because we have a good that has a low price and a high emotional return. So well, in this paper, we are going to analyze the pattern of music consumption across the cycle, building an original database with the most streamed songs from Spotify. We are going to use uh, data from 31 countries that are all from the OECD. And we are going to study uh, the period between 2016, that is the start of the data because uh, Spotify didn't uh, share uh, data previous than this uh, year to, to, to 2021, that is uh, when we started uh, with this study. Okay, so let's take a brief look into the theater. We can find several papers that measure how positive is the consumption of music to life satisfaction. It increased psychological well-being. It increased the sense of togetherness. Is this a source of consolation? Well, it has several good features for individuals. And also, we can find an study of Tadjakova et al. that uh, proves that this lipstick effect we have talked about is already happening in outdoor cultural consumption. This is uh, when socioeconomic crisis the attendance to cinemas, to concerts, to theaters is increasing. Okay, so people is already uh, using this uh, way of consolidating uh, with outdoor cultural consumption. We want to know if uh, music consumption is uh, working the same way. We have a lot of um, papers that point that unemployment and inflation rates are factors of unhappiness and a source of stress. Even more, uh, in 2009, Petit John and Sacco already tested that uh, the lyrics consumption 
uh, is modified when the unemployment rises, when the economic terms are worse for the individual. In this case, they only used uh, data from the most listened song uh, of each year in the US using billboard data. So uh, their database was uh, pretty small, but they find that the, the songs of the years where the socioeconomic situation was worse, um, the lyrics of these songs were more meaningful and more romantic. So we already can find some effect on lyrics according to the socioeconomic situation. Uh, in, a, in a paper we published last year, we already showed that bad macroeconomic conditions and consumption of positive shows show a positive correlation. This is when the macroeconomic conditions are bad, the positive songs consumption increases. In this paper, we are going to test the same thing, but in the previous one, we only used uh, US data because we worked with Billboard instead of Spotify, and they only had a big time period for the US, and we didn't have uh, exact consumption data. We only have a ranking of the most consumed songs, but now we have uh, the exact amount of streams for each song, according to Spotify. As well, uh, that uh, study ended before the COVID-19 crisis, so we only used uh, macroeconomic variables to measure these bad conditions. And uh, economic terms are not the only one affected subjective well-being. We know that the pandemic have also an important and negative impact on subjective well-being, and this is important, uh, especially country-effect Country-specific conditions are the ones that affect more uh, to the individual. In this paper, we are going to study 31 countries, and the regressions are going to be with panel data. This is the consumption of each country is going to be explained by the socioeconomic terms of this same country. We are not going to uh, use the mean or the sum. We are going to study each country. So we are going to uh, give place to these country-specific conditions. People have indeed record to positive music in the COVID-19 crisis to obtain well-being goals, according to Granot et al. This study uses uh, only survey data. They asked people from 11 different countries to, the, to know uh, what music uh, did they listen to in the COVID-19 crisis. Um, well, uh, the result is similar than the one we are going to try to test here, by, but they didn't have a consumption data. They only use surveys. Okay, uh, in this paper, we are going to study 31 countries. So there is something in the literature called cultural divergence process. That is something that is happening right now and says that uh, more and more, each country is listening to uh, their own music instead of the more globalized one. Okay, uh, in this paper, we are not going to focus on this, but we are going to see some facts about it. So let me just uh, quote a couple of uh, papers that try to explain this. The first one uh, is from Data et al. Um, well, they say that the streaming services are the one stimulating these cultural divergences because the, the algorithms of recommendation systems are the ones that make you discover new music. And this other one that is uh, written by Wagner and Lange, uh, well, uh, demonstrate that modern techniques for music production are the ones creating new regional markets because now it's easier to uh, produce music. You can do it... Uh, at your home and you only need a computer and a microphone. So uh, nowadays it's more common to new regional uh, cultural processes to happen because you can gather with some neighborhoods or some friends or whatever and create your own new style. And um, earlier it was harder because the access to music was not that easy as, as now. Well. Uh, finally, to measure the sentiment enclosed in the lyrics, we will use natural language processing techniques. Okay, uh, these techniques has have been used in a lot of uh, different literatures. 
we can highlight its use in economics. Uh, in economics, it's being used mostly for measuring uncertainty. They they measure uncertainty using uh, the news in any newspaper, in the media. Uh, according to the concepts they are uh, using, uh, they can uh, foresee if, uh, if, if a time of economic uncertainty is coming. And for well-being, we can find some papers as well. Uh, this one about Levanti et al. Uh, is good for our case because uh, it studies the rise in depressions according to uh, Twitter because uh, the tweets with a bad mood uh, increased in the COVID-19 crisis. That, are, that is the one that we are going to study. Well, uh, let's start with the explanation of our study. Let's start with the model. The model we are going to use is pretty similar to the consumer theory. Our budget is going to be this capital H that represents the amount of hours we have to listen to music because as i said before uh, listening to music in spotify is free you can pay for premium access but you don't need to and you have to divide uh, these hours you have to listen to music between the music that is positive this pause you can see and the music that is complementary to positive this is uh, the rest of the music and you are going to pay uh, eight lowercase h hours to consume to each kind of music. So the utility for this consumer is going to depend on this uh, quantity of positive and non-positive music that uh, are weighted according to alpha and beta. Alpha and beta uh, are sum to one, and they depend on the business cycle and some social factors. So the quantity of positive music that an individual is going to listen to is going to depend on the business cycle, the social factors, and the uh, amount of time that he has. Okay, uh, the last equation in this slide is uh, the regression we're going to make. In one side, we have the positive lyric sentiment consumption to each country and time period, and it is going to be explained by the macroeconomic conditions and the COVID indicators of this same uh, country and time periods. Let me show you this graph to explain a bit more of our hypothesis. In the left side, we have the non-positive uh, features and in the right side, the positive features. What we see here is that if we are in the line of the range of optimal consumption, if we are in an expansion period, we are going to uh, listen to more non-positive features. But if we are in a recession, we are going to a point uh, where our utility maximizes when we listen to more positive features. Okay, now let's uh, describe our data and explain how we got it. The first thing is to get um, the, the rankings for each country and week. Remember, we have 31 countries and uh, a period from December of 2016 to October of 2021. This is uh, 251 weeks, I think. And well, uh, each song, in, no, uh, excuse me, each ranking has 200 songs. Okay, and we gather the rankings uh, using some automatic uh, features. We built a bot to gather all the rankings because Spotify uh, can give you one ranking, but not all at the same time. And well, when we have the rankings, the first thing we do is to get all the different songs that have appeared in the time period. When we have the name of each song, we search for the lyrics in Google. We have more than 30,000 songs, so we cannot do this manually. What we do is to build a bot that searches uh, the lyrics of each song in Google and saves the results in the HTML code and then we we gather the lyrics from there, okay? And well, uh, with this process, we get the lyrics for more than 75% of total songs. Even more, we have uh, more than 92% of total streams of the period. What does this mean? That the percentage of streams gathered is uh, bigger than songs gathered because the songs we are able to get the lyrics 
are the most representative ones, the most, uh, the most consumed. Okay, in the left side, you can see the evolution of the total songs consumed each week and the song gathered. You can see that uh, the evolution is pretty similar, so uh, we don't have any lack of information in any specific time period. And you can see that the amount of different songs have been increasing, uh, mostly from 2017 to 2020. This shows uh, this cultural divergence process uh, we talked about before. In the right side, you can see uh, the evolution of the total streams uh, consumed in the time period. You can see that it also has increased because uh, Spotify is growing, but from 2020 to 2022, uh, it is stopped. Uh, a paper by Sim et al. already shown that this is because in the pandemic, we were all day at home and we needed uh, some bigger ways to entertain ourselves. So in this time period, uh, the consumption of music decreases because uh, we prefer to consume other cultural things like uh, watching TV shows, uh, films. So uh, Netflix and other platforms were the ones that uh, give you in this period. Okay, so in this study, we are going to use streams and songs to measure consumption. We think that stream is the best way because it is the exact uh, number of consumption of each good that is a song. Okay, and this is the relationship between a song and a stream. If we multiply a song by all the times that it has appeared in a list and all the streams that it has per list, then we have the total amount of streams. This division uh, allows us to show this. Uh, we can see, uh, well, remember that 2021 is not over because uh, our data stops in October, but we can see that the amount of streams have been increasing the amount of strings per song in list has always has also been increased, but the frequency of repetition of song in list has decreased. This means that time to time, songs are appearing in less countries. Another fact that explains this cultural divergence process. The amount of different songs also is increasing. Well, uh, now that we have the lyrics for the songs, we have to analyze if they are positive. But before that, uh, we have to translate all songs to English because uh, our tool only works with English text because it is not trained uh, with other languages. We can see that consumption of English songs has been pretty established, uh, stable, uh, sorry, uh, around the period, but the consumption of Spanish songs and uh, songs in other languages is increasing. It is also pointing uh, to this cultural divergence process we are talking about. And well, um, just to not worry about this, we analyzed uh, them separately and we saw that the amount of positive songs in each language is pretty similar. So uh, the difference between the positive consumption of each country it is not related with the language. In the right side of the graph, you can see the amount of weeks that each song uh, resists in the charts, let's say. And well, uh, the more amount of weeks, the less songs is uh, pretty obvious. Well, there's only one song that uh, stayed the whole period that is Blinding Lights from The Weeknd, but it is not the most consumed song that is uh, Shape of You of x Well. Uh, for classifying the lyrics of a song to know if they are positive or negative, we use Vader, that is a sentimental analysis tool. Vader gives us three coefficients between uh, 0 and 1. One for, for this, well, one for positiveness, another one for negativity, and another one for neutrality. The three values sum up to 1, and we decided that a song is positive if the positive coefficient is bigger than the negative coefficient, and a song is negative if uh, the negative coefficient is bigger. This is the tool we are using because, well, there are uh, many tools similar, but uh, in two years ago, we did a study to compare them uh, using lyrics as the text. Uh, we saw that results were pretty similar, and Vader is the one that has more uh, literature related to it. So we decided to go on with Vader. Well, finally, 
in these two graphs, we can see the evolution of the uh, positive consumption. In the left side of the graph, we can see the number of streams related to positive songs and negative songs. We can see that uh, the streams related to positive songs uh, is always increasing, and the negative ones increased until 2020, and then it started decreasing. Uh, the same uh, time where the COVID-19 rises. And well, the right side of the graph uh, shows the weighted positive songs. This is, we measure each song according to the, the streams it has in each country and time period to give more importance to the most consumed songs. And well, we did a formula and, and this is the result. This is the evolution of the, of the final indicator we are going to use in our regression. You can see that there are strange peaks at the end of the of the years. This is because Christmas carols. Christmas carols are always positive songs and they are most listened in December of each year. So we have a peak in positive consumption uh, every year that has nothing to do with the socioeconomic conditions. Well, this final graph of the data description uh, shows how positive is the music most consumed in each country. I included it so you can see the countries that are in the study that are most Europe, North America, um, Australia, and some Latin countries. These are the ones uh, selected because of two reasons. They are the ones that have information for the whole period, and uh, they are the ones that are from the OECD because we need uh, countries to be from the OECD to gather uh, the economic variables easier. Okay, the economic variables we are going to to use in your study, as I said before, are employment and the mode inflation rates, because are the ones that the literature says that uh, have a big impact in well-being. You can see this uh, big jump in the unemployment rate uh, just when the COVID-19 crisis started. And uh, to measure the COVID-19 impact, we will use all of these variables. The main one will be the stringency index because it uses the information of all the rest, but uh, we have information about the containment health index, the government response, the economic support uh, measures. We also have uh, the new cases of COVID-19, the diseases, the ICU patients. Well, we are going to use all of them in the robust sections, but in the main results, we will only use the stringency index because, as I say, uh, it has information about everything related to the COVID-19 impact. Let's go straight to the results. This table is the main result of the paper. Our dependent variable is this uh, weighted positive songs indicator I explained to you before. And the independent variables are the unemployment rate, the inflation rate, and the stringency index. You can see that all coefficients are positive, no matter the combination between them, and they are always significant. What does that mean? Well, this means uh, that when the unemployment rises, when the inflation rate rises, or the impact of the COVID-19 rises, the consumption of positive music also rises. So it confirms our theory. People use positive music to compensate their bad feelings when uh, a socioeconomic event that is bad for them uh, rises. The effects of the the effects of the panel data regressions are fixed or random according to the results of the Hellman test. And this table is using monthly data because we have weekly data for music consumption and for the COVID impact, but the unemployment rate and the inflation rate are only monthly. So we couldn't use weekly data for this. But we could use weekly data just to measure the impact of the COVID-19. So uh, our first robustness check was to use weekly data because we, we multiply by four our observations and to use all of the indicators of the COVID-19 crisis and not only uh, the stringency index. You can see that no matter the indicator, the coefficient is always positive and always significant. We have done some several robustness checks that are, well, we use different ways to measure positive music. We 
did rankings with the YouTube data instead of the Spotify data. We repeat, repeated uh, the whole study, but with YouTube rankings. And also we used, instead of lyrics, uh, an indicator from Spotify that is called Valence. Valence is an indicator that measures how positive a song is according just to musical characteristics. This is the melody, the rhythm, the key, but they don't use lyrics. The results are robust and they are the same as the ones I have shown you. We also measure differently the dependent variable. Instead of the weighted positive songs, we use the positive percentage of songs, the weighted negative uh, amount of songs, and the weighted net. The results are also robust. And additionally, we include a proxy for Christmas because, as I said earlier, uh, there is a, a rise in in positive consumption according uh, to Christmas carols that it is not related to the socioeconomic situation. And instead of using the 200 songs for each country and week, we use the top uh, 10, the top 100, and also we use only the countries where we had at least an 80% of the streams and well uh, results are always uh, the same so well let's conclude uh, our first conclusion is that we show that society uses cultural consumption specifically music to alleviate the effect on subject well-being surrounding to economic recessions and negative social events such as the COVID-19 pandemic and we contribute to the literature in three dimensions. The first one is that we use exact consumption figures. We build a data set with the number of times of a song has been here. Uh, this differs from the previous study that we talked about that used uh, survey data. Secondly, this study includes for the first time in the literature a group of 31 countries. In the study that we did before, I talked about you earlier that uh, you said uh, US data we couldn't confirm if this was an effect proper to the U.S. community of this use of music. Uh, it's common in different cultures. In this study, we can confirm that it is common in at least uh, 31 countries. Also, we provide some extra evidence of the cultural divergence process that is actually being uh, proven in the literature. And third and finally, this is the first article that demonstrates with real data how sentiment-related music consumption is affected by social events. Because, uh, well, uh, in our first study, we only used um, data from Billboard that didn't have uh, exact consumption figures, and we only used uh, economic variables and not social ones. And our conclusion here is that people react similarly two different types of crisis. And um, well, this is everything. I hope you find it interesting and thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Marco. Perfect timing, very clear presentation, uh, outstanding results. Um, yeah, and uh, in fact, you anticipated uh, um, uh, a key question I had in mind for you, uh, because mm -hmm. this is about uh, uh, positive lyrics of songs. Yes. Uh, it mm -hmm. is true that uh, uh, there is an increasing uh, uh, trend about uh, cultural divergence, uh, uh, which uh, uh, basically, uh, uh, which makes that uh, we we tend to 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 listen to our uh, same uh, language songs, uh, and therefore mm -hmm. we uh, are uh, expected that to understand uh, uh, better the lyrics. Uh, on the other way, on the other hand, uh, uh, we might not always understand the lyrics, and therefore. Uh, uh, to capture the positive or the negative or the neutral character. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so can uh, can you please uh, elaborate on that? Yes, yes. Uh, well, uh, it is true that sometimes you listen to music not according to the lyrics. You sometimes uh, don't even uh, take care of the message uh, behind the song. But uh, you always uh, listen to music because of the song. So uh, because of this, we included this balance from Spotify to measure how a song 
uh, is more or less positive, according to jazz music characteristics, to uh, fulfill this problem of uh, the lyrics not being so relevant for the consumer. Also, uh, because uh, the tool being trained for English test, uh, we were not sure about if the results you see in, for example, Spanish songs uh, were so good as for English ones. Uh, well, the, the same answer. Uh, the use of the balance of Spotify is the way to, to avoid all of these problems. Uh, thank you. Um, are there any questions or comments from the audience? I find here a, a question from Jenes Novo that oh, she yes. said that yeah. she had to leave. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So let me go through the question by Jen Snowball. Mm -hmm. uh, so thank you for the great paper. By the way, I forgot to mention that the paper is still unpublished. Uh, so we have really the chance uh, to go through this uh, uh, brand new piece of research uh, uh, here at the Cultural Economics Online series. Uh, um, so the question from Jen is, uh, so would your findings uh, suggest that positive music should be recommended more as a way of self-regulating well-being uh, for people going through times of stress beyond COVID? Is this an argument for more public support for certain kinds of music? Uh, so a clearly um, uh, policy-oriented question. So what is your answer, Marco? Okay, so well, it's I it, it is hard to answer because I'm not pretty sure if we should uh, support any specifically kind of music uh, publicly. I think it's hard to say to artists that they have to produce uh, any specifically kind of of music. What I'm pretty sure is that well, when we are in a at least economic crisis and the budget is uh, decreasing, the, the public budget, I mean, uh, it is common to see how the spend in culture is reduced because it is not considered uh, as necessary as other public spending. So I think that this paper aims to, to show that culture is pretty important to people and to well-being. So maybe... If in crisis we encourage people to use more uh, culture, they could have an easier path to the end of the crisis. I think at least uh, to be less sad or I don't know, maybe when you are happier, you are more encouraged to consume. Maybe if uh, the government encourages you to consume your music or to go to concerts and things like that, you are going to be more happy and the economic situation is going to be stimulated. All right. Yeah, and uh, continuing in this direction, uh, um, we know that COVID uh, affected the countries uh, in uh, different ways uh, and uh, with different levels of strength. And the uh, countries themselves uh, um, put in place different measures apart from uh, culture in order to uh, mitigate uh, uh, the negative effects uh, um, among the population. Um, could you please explain, so re in relation to your empirical model, uh, how did you take uh, uh, into consideration about that? Uh, did you control simply for uh, the country effect or uh, did you go more in depth in order to control for this? Well, actually, I only use the uh, country effect. I, I stopped it there. I, I want to study in more detail the differences between each country. Uh, also, I have been studying them uh, from this study to, to go on. I recently finished another study that is more related to the cultural differences between its country and, and all of that. So maybe in the future, we can control uh, differently uh, the differences between countries and 
and how they use culture, but in this paper, I only use uh, individual effects in the panel data to control it. All right, thank you. And of course, also the fact that uh, you might have uh, uh, different uh, proportions of the population uh, being consumers of uh, one platform or, or the other, or mm. other uh, uh, cultural distribution channels. Yeah, yeah, that's true. In, in, uh, one th thing that I consider was to, uh, to use all platforms. I only used uh, YouTube to do a, re a robust check because it was too hard to find data from all the platforms. And I wasn't sure how to uh, sum them because uh, they have a different uh, nature. So I did these uh, Spotify regressions and then the YouTube regressions to uh, not um, to not rely only in the information of the Spotify platform, because it is true that some countries uh, use more YouTube or Amazon or, or Apple Music, but I wasn't able to to gather information of all the platforms to a big amount of countries. In any case, an impressive, uh, an impressive uh, data set uh, besides uh, everything. Uh, and uh, I mentioned at the beginning uh, that uh, well, this is already basically a, a finished paper. So my, mm -hmm. my, my next question is, uh, uh, what are you currently uh, uh, researching on? Uh, if you can disclose anything about uh, that is yes, what is yes, uh, yes. further research yes. uh, uh, evidence <laughs> that uh, this paper might uh, point to. Yes, I think that the part uh, englobing uh, this uh, mood compensation of music and socioeconomic events is pretty established already because uh, this paper, the previous one I, I did, some uh, others that you can find in the literature. But uh, what I found interesting to research more uh, is about this cultural divergence process. Uh, I talk about uh, during the presentation that it is not related to the results, but it's like there. And yes, the, the next study I'm currently finishing is most about that. I'm studying like, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to study the how to measure local consumption uh, for with different indicators because you can consider that it is local to consume a, a song that it is performed by a local artist, but maybe that local artist uh, doesn't even live in your country. Or uh, the music it, he is performing is not uh, proper of your country. And so I'm trying to, to build some different indicators with the language, with the nationality of the artist, with the genres they, they perform, to to this to to try to disentangle uh, more characteristics about this uh, cultural divergence process. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't know if there are other questions from the audience. All right. So let me thank you again, Marco, for your very interesting presentation. Very well deserved. Uh, uh, Cultural International uh, Association for Cultural Economics uh, President Price, uh, uh, this edition 2023. So congratulations again. And uh, I would like to take the chance to invite uh, everybody to the next uh, Cultural Economics Online series in one month. Uh, uh, so that uh, uh, is uh, taking place uh, as usual on the second uh, Tuesday of, uh, of the month. And we will have uh, um, this, uh, uh, this time will be not an assay prize, but still another uh, very interesting paper presented by Richard uh, Paulson on health insurance access and the career choices of uh, college graduates with majors in the arts, evidence from uh, the Affordable Cares Act's uh, dependent coverage expansion. 
Um, so thank you very much for being here. You can uh, always uh, uh, watch the recordings of our live seminars on our ASEI uh, YouTube channel. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Marco. And uh, thank you very much to, uh, to the audience. Have a nice rest of the day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.